Hey, I'm Bioscript, and in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this animated third-person controller in Rogue Engine using Mixamo animations. Rogue Engine is a Unity-like environment to make web games using 3JS. It's free to use, and you can download it at rogueengine.io. I'm starting from an empty project, so we'll begin by downloading a couple of packages. Head to the marketplace in the upper right corner of the editor and look for Rogue Rapier. This is an integration for the Rapier physics engine. Go ahead and install that. We'll also need the Rogue Animator package. This will provide us with a component that will simplify our workflow with animations. Let's go ahead and install this one as well. As you can see, we now have this Rogue Packages folder containing the two we have just downloaded. Now we'll save the scene with Ctrl S. We need to give it a name. I'll just call it Test. Don't forget to save often. Now we need to create an environment for our player to walk on. I'll be using one of these prototyping textures by Kenny. I'll leave you a link in the description. He's got some great free assets, so make sure you leave him a donation if you can afford it. After you've downloaded and extracted the images on your computer, you can right click on the icon view, click on import assets and navigate to its location. I'll be using this first one in the package. Now we need to set up the physics engine. Select the scene object in the hierarchy. Hit A and look for the rapier config component. Click on it or press enter to add it to the scene object. This will start the physics engine in our scene when we hit play. Next we'll select a cube, then select its material in the inspector and we'll give it a name. I'll call it floor. Now click on save material. This will create a material asset we can now add textures to and reuse in our objects. Select it to inspect it, then drag the image we've downloaded and drop it on the map field of the material. Now before we configure the texture, I'll set the roughness of the material to 0.5 and the metalness to 0.3. Now click on the texture field to inspect it and we'll set the color space to sRGB color space and the mean field to linear mipmap linear filter. This will make our texture look smoother. Next, we'll set the repeat to 10 on both the X and Y axis. Another thing we can do to improve our scene is go to the hierarchy and select the scene. Then expand the renderer settings. There we'll set the tone mapping to linear tone mapping, the tone mapping exposure to 1.5 to make it brighter, and finally, the shadow map type to PCF soft shadow map. This will give us much smoother shadows. Now expand the skybox settings and there we'll set the inclination to 0.2. This will set the sun higher, giving us shorter shadows. Next, we'll select the cube and scale it by 100 on both the X and Z axis. I'll also go ahead and set the position on Y to minus 0.5 so that our floor surface is at zero. Now we'll right click on the hierarchy and add a group object and call it floor. Drag the default cube and drop it on top of the floor group to make it its child. Next, we'll select the floor group and hit A to add a component and search rapier body. This will create a rigid body for our floor. We'll add it and then set its type to fixed. We need to add a collider to our cube now, so go ahead and select it again and add a rapier cuboid component. This collider will be picked by the nearest parent rigid body, in this case, the floor. Next, it's time to add a few elements to the scene. So I'll duplicate this cube with Ctrl D or Command D and scale it down by 10 on all axes. I'll move it around a bit and keep duplicating and positioning elements to create a few obstacles to test the controller. You'll notice the shadows seem to be cutting out, so let's select the sunlight in the hierarchy. This is a directional light controlled by the skybox and there we'll expand the shadows by setting the left to minus 50, the right to 50, the top to 50 and the bottom to minus 50. Then we'll set the map size to 2048 on both axes. Now we can finally start with the fun part. Let's add the third person controller. Hit Alt A or Option A to open the Asset Manager and find the third person controller prefab. This is included with the Rapier Physics package. Go ahead and drag it and then drop it in our scene. Now you can hit play to test it. You can move with WASD and a mouse or a gamepad. 
We're going to be modifying this object, so before we do anything, we'll duplicate it with Ctrl D or Command D to create a copy that is detached from the original prefab. Then finally, we'll delete the original prefab instance. This is all great, but we need an actual model now, so we'll head to Mixamo.com. Mixamo provides a fantastic library of animations and characters so you can freely use in your games. I'll use the search box to look for the whiteboard character. Then I'll select it and hit download. We need to download it as an FBX for Unity to use it in Rogue Engine. I'll download it straight into the Assets folder. We can now delete the capsule geometry and replace it with a new model. For this, simply drag and drop the whiteboard file on top of the third person character object. Next, let's go back to the Mixamo website and in the animation section, we'll start by searching for running. I'll be using this one here. Before you hit download, make sure that in place is selected. We'll download it as an FBX for Unity as well, but we're not including the model. We just want the animation, so select the option without skin. I'll leave the rest at 30 frames and no compression. We'll need to repeat the process with the idle animation and we'll also be using this fallen animation right here. After you've added them to your project, we need to right click on each of the files and hit get animations. This will create the corresponding rogue animation asset so we can go ahead and delete the FBX files. Now we need to animate our model. So select the root object and you'll notice that it has two components, a kinematic character controller and a third person controller. You can play with the settings to customize it. For this tutorial, we'll leave them as they are. So we'll go ahead and hit A to add the rogue animator component. Now expand the clips list and use the plus button to add three fields. Then we'll click on the keys labels to rename each of them. We'll call them idle, run and falling. Then we'll proceed to drag and drop our animation files in their corresponding field. You can test animations by selecting them from the drop down and hitting play. This component is simply setting up our animations so that we can easily control them from a script. So go ahead and right click on the icon view, go to assets component. We'll call this player controller. Wait for the editor to compile and then we can drag and drop it below the rogue animator. Now open your project folder in your code editor of choice. In my case, VS Code. Make sure you open the project folder and not just the assets. Your file structure on the left should look like mine. Now we'll look for a player controller script in the assets folder. Open it and here we'll start by deleting the awake and start methods as we won't be needing those. Next, we'll get access to the Rapier kinematic character controller in our object using a decorator. Write at followed by the first few letters and it'll prompt to complete it for you. It'll also conveniently import it for you. We'll need to call dot require and we'll save the instance of this component in a property called controller. Next, we'll do the same with the rogue animator. Write at followed by the first few letters, press enter to complete and then call the require decorator and we'll call this property animator. The require decorator is a convenient way to get access to a component in the same object or its parent without having to retrieve it ourselves further in our code, creating unnecessary clutter. Now in the update method, the first thing we're going to do is check if our player is grounded by checking the is grounded property in the controller. Then we'll get the length of the movement direction vector in our controller. And if it's greater than zero, we know that we're moving. If that's the case, we want to use our animator to first set the idle as the base action before we mix our running action using the name we gave it in the list and then 0.1 as the transition speed and finally passing the direction length to continuously set the weight in case we're using an analog stick. The reason to set our base action here is to make sure that we're always mixing the run animation from the idle given that by default the base action is set to the last action that we've mixed from. Next, if we're not moving, we want to mix the idle action. And finally, if we're not grounded, we'll mix the falling action. Save this. Now we can head back to the editor, hit play, and there we have it. How easy was that? It took a lot longer to download assets and set up our scene than actually making the animated controller. We'll make another adjustment here. 
Let's set the camera offset to 1.5 on Y and 2 on Z to pull it closer to the player. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I'm using an Xbox controller here so you can see that if I move the left stick slightly, the idle on run animation weights will mix smoothly. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. In the next one, I'll show you how easy it is to turn this into a multiplayer game. So make sure you leave a like and subscribe to receive notifications the next time I post a video. Also, if you're stuck or have any questions, you can leave a comment below or better yet, join our Discord where I can provide more dedicated support. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.